Hello everybody and welcome to Planet Earth. I am totally on Planet Earth right now. I am not here to infiltrate your planet. I am a citizen of Earth. A citizen of all of Earth. Uh, every last bit of it. And my name is King Noosme. Last week I ran a poll asking you guys which episode of Goosebumps you guys would like to see me talk about next. And unsurprisingly... Welcome to Camp Nightmare 1. Welcome to Camp Nightmare is one of my favorite episodes of Goosebumps. It was my favorite overall as a kid. It was the first Goosebumps episode to ever blow my mind. It might have been the first thing to ever blow my mind. I'm not sure. And it made me happy to see that it was quite popular with you guys as well. As I was re-watching this, I was a little scared that maybe the episode wouldn't hold up. Because let's be honest, a lot of these Goosebumps episodes don't really hold up very well. But this is one of the few episodes of Goosebumps that I think holds up really well today. And is even still very interesting. Welcome to Camp Nightmare is the fifth and sixth episode of Goosebumps in season one. Forgot how many bangers were in season one of Goosebumps. And this episode was so popular that clips of it show up in other Goosebumps episodes, including Bride of the Living Dummy, which I talked about in my video. Go check that out if you haven't seen that. Stay out of the basement. It came from beneath the sink and an old story. But anyways, let's stop yapping and get into the episode. We start this episode in quite a weird way. Watch as a bus full of kids screeches to a stop as something menacing watches them from the wood line. The bus driver stops the bus, gets out, unloads all the kids' luggage, and quietly just leaves. And as this is happening, we get to meet a few of the campers, including our main character, Billy, who is played by Kai Eric Erickson. And some of you might find him a little familiar because he was actually in an Are You Afraid of the Dark episode, a pretty popular one too, the one that's the tale of the dead man's float. We also get to meet Roger, who is played by Benjamin Plinner, and you might know him from another Are You Afraid of the Dark episode, the Tale of Jake and the Leprechaun. Man, this show really needs to have shorter titles. He was also in another Goosebumps episode known as the Haunted House Game. And we also get to meet Jay and Colin. They're, they're here as well. Oh, and Mike. After the bus driver rudely stops the bus, dumps their luggage, he hops back in the bus and then tries to commit vehicular manslaughter on all the kids. Luckily, nobody gets hurt yet. But as everybody is panicking and trying to find their luggage, something roars at them from the distance. And anybody that was slightly panicked before is now super panicked because something's about to eat them. And this is when we get a bit of a glimpse into Billy's personality. He immediately puts himself in harm's way, tells everybody to get back and stay back so he can go and see what's going on. He walks closer to the roar we get a small little glimpse of the monster that's hiding in the woods. And then... The creature explodes! What the fuck? It must have been like a defense tactic, you know? Like, you can't kill me if I kill myself first. Easy peasy. Turns out it was just camp director and fan favorite Uncle Al. Uncle Al uses this moment to tell the kids to be careful of wildlife out here because things can get you and hurt you. But Billy asks him, What was it? The wolf monster is named Saber, which is a sick name, I'm not gonna lie. And Uncle Al just used that gun to scare him off. And Uncle Al somehow didn't kill Saber. He just scared him away. I would be scared away too. Did you see how big that explosion was? Now they get a fun mile long hike back to the campgrounds. And along the way we meet a few more people and we get a little bit of Billy's backstory. Billy's parents are scientists and they go on frequent trips because of their job. And every time they go on a trip, he has to go stay at a relative's house for a few days or weeks. For this trip, he decided that he was just gonna go to summer camp. And we also get to meet Dawn. She's important later though. And finally, after their mile long hike, the boys and girls get split up because boys and girls can't bunk together. Girls have cooties. And they arrive at Camp Night Moon, which honestly is a really nice camp. But before they can do anything, Uncle Al gives the boys some rules. Don't leave your bunks at night or sneak out. Who would do such a thing? The girls camp is off limits. You'll catch cooties. Lights out at nine and wake up at six. And the last rule, write home to your parents every day. Okay. That's it. And as Uncle Al is finishing up, Billy notices a creepy, decrepit house behind him. So naturally he asks, What's that, Uncle Al? And obviously the creepy house is called the Forbidden Bunk. Why is it called the Forbidden Bunk? Because it's forbidden. So stay clear. Yeah, Billy, you idiot. The boys make it to their bunk and they're getting all settled in. And Billy notices that somebody etched Saber is hungry in red ink on the wall. And Colin tells him that Saber killed two kids last year, which Billy obviously doesn't believe. But they get interrupted by... Ah! Ah! A snake somehow snuck into their bunk and bit Mike on the hand. Billy, using his quick thinking, wrapped the snake up in a sheet and they threw the sheet out of the window. And Mike is taking the situation quite well, actually. He calmly asks if he can go see a doctor or somebody, which would be nice, but at this time, their camp counselor shows up. Uh, the name's Larry? Um, the name's Larry? <laughs> Why did he do the finger thing? Larry is probably the worst person to ever live ever and is definitely the most annoying Goosebumps character 
ever flat out. I hate Larry. No one can top him on the annoying scale. And we get the first example of him being the worst person ever right here. Billy tells Larry that they need to get Mike to the nurse because of his snake bite. But Larry just answers with, why'd you throw a perfectly clean sheet out the window? Bruh. Can you at least like act like you care for about five seconds, maybe? Finally, after about five minutes of them trying to explain that a snake bit their friend and that's why they threw a sheet out the window, he, oh man. Get that out of my face, I just ate. Still doesn't care. Larry just grabs the first aid kit and a few bandages and tells Mike to wrap it up. But Billy doesn't think that this will help too much. He thinks that they really need to get Mike to the doctor to get the poison out first. And listen, I'm no zoologist, but I'm pretty sure the snake that was in the bed sheet was a ball python. And if Animal Planet taught me anything, it's that ball pythons are constrictors and not venomous. Not that I want to side with Larry. Trust me, that's the last thing I want to do, but I think the kid will be fine. Oh, and Larry also reveals that there is no nurse at the campgrounds. What nurse? What do you think? Uncle Al runs a camp for wimps? And that night, the whole camp gather around the campfire and they sing nice little campfire songs. Quite terribly, I might add. And as they sing, Saber stalks them from the wood line. Like a great friend, Billy brings Mike a hot dog. Mike talks about how he's feeling a lot of pain and how his body is going completely numb on one side. But the snake was a python. I think Mike is having a stroke. But as Billy is trying to help Mike, Uncle Al gets mad at him for interrupting the campfire song. How dare he? This is when Billy just explains to Uncle Al what happened to Mike. And finally, somebody decides to help Mike. Uncle Al nurses Mike up a little bit and lets him know that he'll be okay. The swelling and pain will go away by the morning. Uncle Al then praises Billy for being a good friend and then titles him number one camper. I don't know what that entails, but it's cool, I guess. Later that night, the boys talk about exploring the forbidden bidden bunk. But Billy doesn't really want to do it. He wants to make sure Mike is okay and also they'll get in trouble if they do that. But as they're walking to their bunk, something is stalking them from the woods. But as they slowly walk inside the bunk, Saber gets closer and closer until finally... Luckily the boys make it inside just in time. The next morning the boys wake up and Mike is missing. Literally. He disappeared in the night and all his stuff is completely gone. His bed is even rolled up and has no sheets on it. The only thing that's left of him is his bandage on the doorstep outside. Billy searches for Mike outside but runs into... <laughs> This guy. This guy is George and he is there too. George tells Billy that him and his bunkmates need to get down to the cafeteria to eat breakfast. Billy isn't worried about breakfast right now. He's worried about what happened to Mike. So he asks George about it, but George doesn't care. He tells him to just talk to Larry about it. Great, here we go again. In the cafeteria, the boys ask a ton of questions about Mike, but they're just met with, geez, Larry, you got a bunch of whiners this summer? Finally, Billy has had enough of Larry's shit and gets serious. Where is he, Larry? He means business. But Larry just stays his terrible self and says, Mike's not here, Billy. So I guess maybe he's somewhere else. I hate this guy. I hate this guy. The boys tried to come up with a reasonable explanation as to why Mike wasn't there when they woke up. Colin thinks that they just sent him home because of his wound. But if that's the case, then why wouldn't Larry just tell them that? But maybe something more sinister is going on here. Later that day, everybody's outside playing baseball and Uncle Al is not wearing any protection. He's going to get hurt back there. And while Billy is getting ready to bat, he decides to ask Uncle Al himself what happened to Mike. Mike. But Uncle Al just says, Mike, which one's Mike? Which is understandable. I imagine he's in charge of like a hundred kids. He can't keep up with every single one of them. So he probably doesn't know who Mike is genuinely. But Uncle Al just talks him through it, tells him to brush it off. You're here to have fun. So let's have some fun and play baseball. So Billy does. Well, he tries to. He does hit a dinger to left field though. Yeah. I played baseball. I know terms. Which almost gets Colin out, but luckily for us, he's too fast for Larry. Safe at third. What? And Larry doesn't like that. Larry. So in the next play, Larry decides to get revenge on Colin by literally throwing the ball as hard as he can at the back of his head. And he tries to use the excuse. It slipped out of my hand, Uncle Al. It slipped. Yeah, okay. And my hand slipped when I hit that guy with my car back in 98. Okay, yeah. They pick up Colin and pretty much tell him to tough it out. No, wait, they literally tell him to just tough it out. You're okay, come on, tough it out. And then Uncle Al lets Bunk 4 know that they're going to be doing survival night, sleeping under the stars in only tents. And they'll be the first group to do that. So that night while the boys are hanging out in the tents, Jay and Roger talk about going to the forbidden bunk once again. But Billy doesn't want to leave Colin alone alone while he's still injured. So the other two decide to go anyways. But that's when we hear. And that's when Billy shoots up out of bed, grabs a flashlight and runs straight to the forbidden bunk. He's braver than me, dude. I wouldn't do that. If I heard a, a roar outside, I'm staying right in my fucking tent. Don't look at me.
Oh, like you do the same thing. Yeah, okay. But before he can make it to the tent, he meets up with Jay who tells him that Roger was just torn to pieces by Saber. What? That's crazy. So Billy and Jay quickly go and pick up Colin, but all he can say is, Saber's coming. They lift Colin up and carry him all the way back to their bunk while Saber is chasing them. Saber is honestly really fast until he catches up to the boys and then he like gets hit with like a slowness potion from Minecraft or something. He just almost completely stops. Luckily, the boys make it to the bunk where they're safe. And that's where the first episode ends. Luckily for me, I wasn't born in the 90s, so I didn't have to wait a whole week to see what happens in part two. But I do think this episode does a great job at making kids want more. There's so many questions to ask. What's happening to all these missing campers? Why are the staff acting like the missing kids never even existed? Why is Saber terrorizing the camp? Will the boys survive through the night? Will Larry ever stop being a little bit? Lots of important questions here. I also love how quickly they show off the kids' personalities in the episode. I didn't show it to you guys, but there's a bunch of little small scenes that show off these kids personalities it's just like them walking from place to place you know a little filler thing i try to talk about things that go with the main plot of the episode right off the bat we see that billy is the confident leader type and he has a really strong moral compass he always knows what to do and when to do it mike was the shy but sweet kid and he was kind of picked on for being the fat kid but he's really not fat at all actually colin is the typical bad guy kid where he's just too cool for everybody but he's also kind of goofy so roger is the funny one he was always cracking jokes. He said so many one-liners in this episode. And Jay, well, Jay is there. They didn't really give him much of a personality trait. But... I feel like I've blabbered enough, so let's get on to the next episode. And we start this episode right where we left off in the last one, and we learned that the thing that opened the door is... Just Larry. What are you guys doing out of your tents? I think I'd prefer Saber. The boys try to tell Larry that Roger was torn to pieces by Saber at the Forbidden Bunk, but all Larry heard was, You guys went to the Forbidden Bunk? How many kids die at this camp for you to ignore that? But no matter how much they try, they can't seem to get through to Larry. And even with roaring in the distance, Larry still believes that they're lying. And that night, the boys agree to have one person stay up just to make sure that they're safe throughout the night. <laughs> The next morning, the boys wake up and they look for Uncle Al to tell him about what happened to Roger. They go to the cafeteria and they ask Larry, Where's Uncle Al? Man, Billy really isn't fucking around anymore. <laughs> but Larry won't tell them where Uncle Al is at all. And I think he's a little hurt that they want to talk to Uncle Al and not him. But they have a really good reason to. Because you don't believe us about Roger. And this is when Larry says something that's a little spine chilling. I don't even know the guy. What? He was literally your picture yesterday in the baseball game. And he's also one of five boys that you are assigned to take care of. How do you not remember him? After a bickering, of bickering, like always, Larry just orders the boys to put on their swimming trunks and that they're going to the lake today. On the way to the lake, the boys talk about how concerning the camp is getting. It's so bad that Billy even talks about calling his parents to come pick him up because he doesn't want to stay there anymore. And Jay brings up that maybe they're using the forbidden bunk to hide the kids' dead bodies. That's crazy. That's a crazy thing to say. Don't you think they'd be like a smell or something? Also, where is this place located on the campgrounds, dude? It's like right next to the entrance when we first walk in and then it's near their bunk. Now it's near the lake. Where is this fucking bunk at? Billy excuses himself from the boys so he can try to look for a phone to go call his parents. And luckily he does find one. So he tries to call his parents, but... <laughs> What are you doing, Billy? Uncle Al catches him, and he doesn't seem too happy that he's trying to call home. <laughs> Never mind. Uncle Al is just a prankster, and he put this phone here as a joke because there actually is no phone at Camp Night Moon, which really sucks. Billy then asks Uncle Al about Roger, but all Uncle Al has to say is, I checked the files. There is no camper up here named Roger. No first name, no middle name, no Roger which is simply not true. And this shows Billy that he can't trust Uncle Al either because he has a hand in whatever's going on with these missing campers. Billy makes it to the lake to see that Colin and Jay are already in a canoe in the middle of the lake. Billy tries to tell them what happened with Uncle Al when counselor baby bottom shows up and he tries to get them to put on life vests which is the only time this guy is concerned with their safety at all in the whole episode my friend was torn to pieces i don't care hey you're in the middle of a lake you better put this life jacket on you're gonna drown also those are just floaties they're not even life jackets larry throws them the floaties when 
they both fall in. Which normally would be fine, but apparently both of them aren't good at swimming. Okay, that was a lie. Only Colin is bad at swimming, which causes him to panic, which makes him sink. And Dre tries to help him by diving down and getting him, but Jay doesn't come up either. Finally, Billy decides he's gonna jump in and help both of them, but for some reason, Larry won't let him. And they tussle for a second, but Billy falls in anyways. And in this moment, Larry panics, acts like he never saw anything, and then simply runs away, which is extremely weird and makes me think that all the counselors have this, if I didn't see it, it didn't happen rule, and that's why they act like all these campers didn't exist. Billy tries hard to find his friends underwater to no avail. Not even their bodies float up to the surface, they just simply disappear. Billy runs back to camp to try to get some help, but it looks like someone's joining him. But Billy has been panicking and swimming and running so much, so he tries to stop for a second to catch his breath, which might be his worst mistake. Billy luckily escapes Saber once again, but when he makes it back to Camp Nightmoon, it's empty, completely empty. Even the beds and the bunks are all rolled up. Billy starts to panic. He doesn't know what's going on. He's concerned about all his friends that just disappeared and now the whole camp is gone. Is this all real? Has it all been fake? Has he imagined the whole thing? Luckily, he's got a level head and he decides to just change clothes, get a bat, and get back on his feet. And he's going to figure out what's going on. And while he's looking for literally anybody around the camp, he sees a bunch of notes flying in the wind. And he follows them all the way back to the forbidden bunk. He walks inside to see a dilapidated, withering bunk with a cute little rat friend. Oh, and Dawn is hiding in there. He tells Dawn that he's trying to escape because Because Camp Night Moon's a nightmare, that's how come. He said the he said the thing, he said the episode name, he, sa he said it. And apparently the same thing that's been happening to Billy has been happening to her. She talks about a friend of hers and on the first day she got mauled by a bear, which is insane. But when they told a counselor, she just made her get up and walk back to camp. And back at the camp, the girls in the bunk tried to nurse her back to health. But the next day she was completely gone. And as they're talking, Billy notices something a little strange. He finds a small chest that is filled with letters that Uncle Al has been making these kids write to home. There are some letters from this year, but there are a lot of letters from years and years and years beforehand. Then, there's a whistle outside. Billy takes a peek outside the window to see that Uncle Al and the counselors are dressed completely in camo. And so Billy tells Dawn to wait right there. He's gonna check it out and see what's going on. Tries to go outside and spy on the guys to see what's happening, but Larry catches him. Of course, Larry has to be the one to catch him. This is when Billy absolutely loses it and lets Uncle Al have it all. Now, all of his friends are missing and nobody's doing a thing about it, but Uncle Al cuts him off completely and tells him to get in line with the rest of the campers. Uncle Al then hands every kid a crossbow and fills them in on their mission. There's been a runaway camper from the girls camp and their mission is to stop her search everywhere aim carefully we do not want her getting away but billy won't be doing that they aren't trying to kill her though the crossbows are loaded with tranquilizer darts and they simply want to stop her and bring her back to the camp so that they can kill her probably or do you have a problem with that billy do you have a problem? Oh yes, Billy does have a problem with that because he turns the crossbow onto Uncle Al. And this is when he says one of the most badass one-liners ever. Camp's over. Nobody else is gonna die. God, he's so cool. God, he's so cool. Billy once again brings up that all his friends have disappeared from camp and Uncle Al stops him again and says, Die. Nobody has died here, Billy. And Uncle Al asks the other counselors if they've heard of any of these kids. And of course they say, Never heard of them. Nope. Uncle Al then tries to literally gaslight him into thinking he imagined all of his friends and none of them were real. And he tries to get Billy to put the crossbow down, but Billy shoots him anyways, which causes Uncle Al to Congratulations, Billy. Congratulate, Billy. What? Everyone starts clapping and cheering for Billy, who was nothing but confused, just like I was the first time I watched the episode. Billy's parents come out of the woods and congratulate him on passing a series of tests. And this is when he starts to ask about all of his friends. Jay and Colin, they just hid under the canoe where there was an air pocket so they could breathe until Billy left. Mike used a rubber snake to trick Billy into thinking he was bit, which is a little stupid, but I'll talk about that here in a second. And Roger is alive. He's just alive. Now I know the people that have never seen this episode still don't know what test he passed. Well, Billy's parents have been assigned to a really important mission that would cause them to be gone for a really long time. And they didn't want to go that long without seeing their son, so they put him up to this test to see if he's prepared to go on this expedition. And he proved to them that he's quick on his feet, quick thinking, and has courage. And everybody at Camp Night Moon were just actors from the lab. Now that Billy is safe, he can go home happy. Wait just a minute. What about Saber? <laughs> 
the saber, Billy. Saber is also fake, which is kind of sad. I really like Saber. I like how fun and spooky Saber was. And now that all the loose ends are all tied up, we can finally learn what the big mission that his parents are going on is. Where are we going? Very far away. A place called Earth. Research tells us the aliens there are pretty dangerous and uh, unpredictable. So yes, Billy and everybody in this episode were actually aliens the whole time, and they're going to be going on an expedition to planet Earth. My little six-year-old brain could not fathom that ending. I was like, what? What? No way. No way. I hadn't had anything blow my mind since that episode until I watched Shawshank Redemption and then Donnie Darko after that. But that's the end of the episode. So yes, Billy was a kid that thought he was going to summer camp to have a load of summer fun, only to be tossed into the middle of his own thriller movie situation, where literally all his friends disappear at some point, and some right in front of him, while a beast chases him multiple times, all for it to be a test to see if he's prepared to come to planet Earth, where people thought demons were going to come out of the Eclipse like the Berserk manga. Honestly, he probably could just like have passed Algebra 2 and then that would have been enough. He's probably smarter than 90% of the planet after that. Now quickly before I forget, Mike's excuse for the snake is very stupid. First of all, that rubber snake looks nothing like the actual snake that they used in the scene. Second of all, it could have been very easy to tell if he was bit or not. Just look for a bite mark and blood. I'm sure Billy is smart enough to notice ketchup and real blood. Then again, they are aliens, so they could just like, you know, bleed on cue or something, I guess. Also, I love Saber's design. I think he's the coolest werewolf in Goosebumps. Don't, don't get mad at me. I think I like him. I like him a lot. He's not even a werewolf. He's just a big ass fucking wolf. I want it so bad. I want the actual prop they used in the episode to be mine. Give it to me. But also in the episode, wouldn't he be able to see George controlling him from the woods and stuff? Because it looked like he had to stand up and move these things. So you'd think he would just be like a white dude behind a giant wolf. Maybe a little plot hole there. The only difference I can remember personally from the book and the episode is at the end, Uncle Al gave the kids rifles to hunt down Don, not crossbows. But I think that's the only one I can remember. I'm sure there's a lot more. Let me know any of them in the comments below. Like I said earlier, I think the suspense in these episodes is really good. I think this is one of the best made Goosebumps episodes ever. I'm surprised it didn't win an award, but I might be a little biased. Like I said, it's probably in my top five episodes, maybe top three, honestly. Let me know what you think of Welcome to Camp Nightmare in the comments below, and let me know any other Goosebumps episodes you want to see me talk about. I have a Patreon. $5 members get the video a day early, so if you want to watch my videos a little bit earlier than somebody else, make sure you join the $5 tier. You also get bonus content and maybe some pictures of my cats every once in a while. And there is a free tier if you just want to come join and hang out. Like the video if you liked the video. Thank you for watch the video all the way through. I appreciate you all and peace.